All right, this is the homework help for 11.1b, domain and range. So what we're talking about, remember, with domain and range is the main is the x values and range is the y values. Now, you could write each of these coordinates out and then just look at the x values. That's perfectly OK. As we're only really interested in the x values, I actually just like to look at each point. I always go left to right on these and then just read from the x values, read from the x axis here. Uh, that one's actually on the point at this point. So if I was doing this question here, I would literally now just read off each of these numbers here. So the negative one, zero, one, and three. Now, not that it asks for this one, but if it asks for the range, do the same thing, but go to the y-axis. So starting at the bottom, just so I don't miss any, negative two, zero, one, and three. So a very easy way of just checking to see exactly what the domain and range is of a particular function. Question two. What is the range of the relation below? So we just talked about range being the y values. So just go ahead and look at the second values. The x values, if it was range, it would be this one. Sorry, if it was domain, it would be four, negative four, negative two, and eight, as it's just the range, you're just gonna go ahead and look at the Y values. That should be a nice straightforward question. And there are some fairly nice ones for this topic. What is the domain of the relation shown below? Now, sometimes for pictures like this, it looks very tempting. Like it looks like it stops here at negative 10 and it looks like it goes up to eight. And uh, let's have a look at that as an option. See, that's not actually an answer for this question, which is good. Sometimes they'll draw an arrow on the end here to show that this graph continues. And sometimes they don't. They just assume by the edge of the paper here that this, cap, this carries on this way and this would carry on this way. So actually, I can't say that there's a smallest value you can have for this. Like the line doesn't stop. And same for the right, actually. I can't put anything at the end here because it just continues to go forever and ever. Um, some of the answers I can definitely eliminate are just by looking at the answers here. Negative two, it says all numbers are greater than negative two, but I can see that some are smaller than negative two as well. So I know that it's clearly not that one as well. So sometimes the ones with the numbers, you can use those to help you pick out which ones are not true as well. Question four. What is the range of the relation below? So we're looking at the Y values. So literally we're looking for the highest point and we're looking for the lowest point. So the lowest point on the graph would be here and the highest point on the graph would be here. When we see those closed circles, we know that we're allowed the equal sign. Even if this didn't have a closed circle here, you know you would still include it. The only time you don't include it is when it's an open circle. So we can see it's between those two numbers. Take a look on the answer choices. I'm not sure for this one, but often on the SOL, it will actually have X as a couple of those answers. And then you can ignore those anyway, because we're talking about range. Aha, same here. So some of the answers include X, but we know that's domain, not range. So knowing those vocabulary words will really help eliminate some of those wrong answers for you. Uh, question five, domain. So we're talking about X values. So once again, we can assume this graph continues forever and ever because you can see kind of the pattern here. So I don't think I can find the smallest value for this one, but I can certainly find a biggest value as I go across to this side here. Nothing gets past this number here. So I think I can use that to help me with my answer. Notice once again, some of these answers are not gonna be even relevant. Y is not for domain, so we can eliminate that answer. Question six, what is the range? So once again, we're looking for the Y values. Have a look at the answer choices. Uh, can't do that one quite so easily for this one. because It doesn't mention X and Y. So notice that this continues upwards and upwards. So there's no highest value we can have for this. So it's just what's the lowest value for this one. So find the lowest point on the graph, take a little reading. And then from there, you should be able to conclude what the correct answer is. Notice some of the answers you can just look at and eliminate straight away. The set of all real, num real numbers greater than or equal to four. Well, four on the y-axis is here and clearly you can go below four. They actually picked four because it was the number on the x-axis, but that's not relevant for this question at all. 
So sometimes you use the answers and find the bad wrong answers as well to help you make your choice. Number seven, uh, which the best describes the range. So we're looking for the Y values again. So same thing, just use the notes we did on the previous question and that should help you to pick out the correct answer for this one as well. Very similar question. Uh, that specific type of graph you'll see in Algebra 2, the, the V-shaped graph, uh, is called an absolute value graph. I know we've done absolute value this year. Uh, range, same thing. Once again, we're looking for the highest and the lowest. Doesn't appear to be a highest value because this continues. Certainly go and find that lowest value, that vertex. Take a reading to the y-axis and you should be able to answer that one. Uh, written a little differently this time. So don't worry too much about this part here. Just focus on this side here. Uh, but we know this is not the answer anyway, because we know that the range does not involve y. Uh, sorry, it does not involve x, it involves y. So get rid of those bad answers straight away. Question nine, uh, f of x equals negative two x plus one. Uh, if the domain is x is greater than zero or equal to zero. Now, this one is a little sneaky. Now, notice for this one, they did not give us a picture. So if they do not give us a picture, we would probably kind of want to look to see what this actually looks like. So let me go ahead and type that one in. Uh, there we go, negative two X plus one. Uh, it also says when X is greater than or equal to zero. So as I type that in, the only part of the graph we're actually interested in is this part where it's actually shaded. Um, I think this is the one where I can zoom in because I have a touch screen, but it's not always easy for other people to do that. So, oops, there we go. Um, I can certainly click on this value here. So notice the graph continues um, uh, downwards. We're looking for the range. So the highest value on this graph, actually, we can just see straight away from here. So it's not, if I take off this here, it looks like it might be all real numbers because this graph continues forever upwards. But by adding this restriction, we're only interested in the shaded region. And therefore, we can pick out the answer that's going to be relevant from there. Uh, that's a submit quiz. So that means that would be the end. Hopefully, if you've been following along, that should be enough to get you 10 out of 10.